I still remember the exact moment I realized we were going to have to revolutionize the way we all share data with each other. It happened at this very conference, in fact, just about 20 years ago. I had been working on neuroinformatics for almost 10 years by then, and even worked with the San Diego Supercomputer Center on some of the earliest efforts to put data on the grid, the conceptual precursor to what we now know as the cloud. But I was also a scientist trying to publish papers, so I had the same attitude toward data that anyone else did. You generate it, and then it's yours. Part of it was that none of us wanted to get scooped. But I think the even bigger factor was that sharing your data is a very vulnerable thing to do. We all realize at a certain point that the only perfect data set is the one in our heads. Anytime you look at a real one, there are missing data, there may be errors, there are imperfections in images. You're not gonna put those in a paper, but when anyone else can see your data, they can see your mistakes. Nobody wants that. But one year in the early 2000s, I was at the Society for Neuroscience looking at all the posters running down this huge exhibition hall. I had just looked at a poster about an actin binding protein because our team had been doing some work on actin binding proteins and spines. I thought this particular one was really interesting. It had some anatomy, a little molecular biology. And then I went to the next poster, which was about an actin binding protein too. So was the next one and the next one, and the next one. If any one of these people had come to my university to give a talk on their work, I'd think we were really getting somewhere in terms of furthering our understanding of the brain. But when you put it next to literally hundreds of variations on the same work, I realized we were actually just going around in circles. If we didn't start working together to make the information computable and shareable, we would only ever understand little bits and pieces we'd never be able to put together a holistic understanding of the brain. In the early days of the US Brain Project, we got a lot of pushback on the idea that we'd all be better off with an open data philosophy. There was an article in Nature about why it was just outrageous that anyone would share data, and many people were quite angry. I was asked to go speak to the editors of a journal because they were thinking of getting into data sharing, and one guy stood up as I was speaking and more or less said, F off. We don't want to do this, and we are not going to do this. We, as a neuroscience community, haven't always had the best track record of positively impacting people's lives. Underpowered studies lead to failed clinical trials. It's now been 10 years since the famous Amgen article where researchers couldn't reproduce the findings of 47 out of 53 cancer studies. That showed us that a lot of scientific research wasn't being done the way it should be done and lack of openness and transparency does have an impact. Just this year, it's the Alzheimer's studies, where it turned out that a dominant theory of the disease may be based on some fabricated data. Jealously guarding your data may be good for you, but it's not good for science. It's not good for anyone else's career. It's not good for patients. It breaks our promise to society. My attitude since the problems with science started to come out is that I don't need to justify the importance of sharing data. You need to justify why you continue to do the same thing that's borne so little fruit. When more people started to think like that, it flipped the argument. Can I guarantee that data sharing is going to lead to better treatment? No, although we already have some evidence that it will, but we know the problems with the current system. When the National Institutes of Health announced earlier this year that we would all have to include plans for data management and data sharing in our grant application starting next year, I almost couldn't believe it. It felt like such a validation of so many people's work, a stake in the ground that says we're actually changing. I've been thinking of retiring for a while. I even came close to doing it a few years ago, but I did a really bad job of it. I've had a long and wonderful career. I have a lot to be proud of if I did retire. But whenever anyone asks me why I didn't, I say because I didn't want to leave things undone. Many of my colleagues told me to be happy because at least we moved the needle. But I always say, is your goal just to move the needle? That isn't my goal. We have an obligation to society to do the very best we can. And if that requires reinventing the whole system, then that's what we must do. There are still challenges ahead, 
we will make mistakes and we will get a lot of stuff wrong and we'll go down roads that turn out not to be productive or not possible. But if we're doing the best we can, then that's okay. And I'm not riding off into the sunset just yet. I want to help make the open data world work for everyone. I want people to come up to me and ask me how. You just can't come up and ask me why. Finally, we've taken that off the table. Thank you.